Hello everyone and welcome back to another Universe Sandbox video and today we're going to be doing part two of making a solar system out of hypothetical objects. So massive thank you for the support, the feedback on the last video guys, really really appreciate it. Looks like you guys really really enjoyed it and you know what, so did I. It was good fun making it so... Let's continue with part two now. So we've got a lot more high fresco objects to add. Some of you guys left some comments and some stuff as well. So let's get into this. So I'll go through the comments first before I get back on the list I was following last episode. So first up, we have got... So we've got one from Ultimate Nigel here. So I think a cool planet to add is Tish. It was a high fresco object in the Oort cloud that could be up to four times the mass of Jupiter and responsible for the long period comets okay right and i haven't actually heard of this one so let me just have a quick look at that so if i just search up just a hypothetical planet in the Oort cloud okay interesting it's proposed in 1999 eh? okay that's interesting stuff actually okay huh Right, so where should we have this? So it needs to be in the Oort cloud somewhere. Okay. Interesting. So it appears to be a sort of, yeah, like I said, a four, four massive Jupiters. actually bigger than Jupiter, almost a brown dwarf-like object. Okay, interesting. Very, very interesting. So it kind of seems like it's almost like a nemesis theory kind of object. We haven't actually had a nemesis yet. We'll definitely be adding that later on as well. Yeah, it seems to be definitely a gas giant, so let's go ahead and do this. So, let's go something big and scary, so let's go with, ooh. I do quite like the golden gas, I think that's quite a cool object to use. Could use that. Uh, any more realistic looking ones? I mean, that is quite a dominant coloured one, that is. Uh, let's see, ooh. Anything here worth using? I wouldn't say so. It's a hard choice. There is a lot to choose from. <laughs> Sulfur gas. I mean, that could look good if we increase the size. I don't know. Because uh... all the yeah, the images are all shown as like a bright orangey yellow object. So I think in you know, I think golden gas could actually be quite a good, good one to use here. So it needs to be in the Oort cloud. So I mean, it's going to be. Planet 9 distance, you know, somewhere around here. So, pretty far away. I mean, the fact that, actually, no, no, because Oort Cloud would be even further out than Planet 9 sort of distance, actually, because... Ooh. I want to say it'd be further sort of out here. That It'd be further out than the Planet 9 sort of... This, I'm just going to place it there for now. I just want to just do, do have a quick refresher of where the Oort Cloud actually starts. I'm sure it's around a good 5 to 1,000 AU, isn't it? Distance from the sun. It's, oh, it's around 2,000. Okay, 2,000 AU. So if it's meant to be in the Oort Cloud, it needs to be a good 2,000 AU away then. So, so it needs to be about five masses of Jupiter. Four masses of Jupiter. There we go. Oh, no, no. Four masses of Jupiter. There we go. Okay, so over there. Radius is also four Jupiter, so I guess we'll keep it roughly in line then. Um, and then it needs to be about 2,000 AU away. So where are we? So we need to be in distance AU. So we need to really double this up then. So it needs to be more like, not in light years, AU please. Around 2,000 AU. So it's in the middle of the Oort cloud, so it's going to be somewhere out there. And we actually also need to um, lower this value as well. We want less eccentricity and then just put this straight to 2,000. And then put that to 2,000 as well. There you go, that's more like it. So in the Oort cloud, and then we'll give it a bit of eccentricity just to make it a little more interesting as well. Okay. There we go. And then this needs to be called... So teach. Teach, like that. Okay, so there it is. So it should be a pretty large boy as well. So it should be... Yeah, yeah. Whoa. That's pretty big. It's four Jupiters, remember, so it is a pretty pretty big, chunky object, that is. Um, is it a little too overkill, though? I mean, if we were to throw a Jupiter in just for comparison, I mean... Let's see, Jupiter. So Jupiter would sit... Oh. 
I think that's a little too much. Okay, I'm going to halve that down. So I'm going to keep it at four masses. I'm going to halve that down to two. Lock that and then put that back to four. I think that's a little more. I don't want to make it too large now. So there we go. So it is on the very, very far region though. So there you go. Looking good. So it is at that 2,000 AU point. So where are we? So AU. 2,000. This in AU as well. It's annoying it kind of defaults to light year. I think it does default to light year a bit too early. So, okay, so there you go. So, got 2,000, 1,000. It's got a slightly tilted orbit. But, yeah, that's definitely all cloud distance there. Looking good. Okay, so. Next up. Nibiru. Ah, that was the one I was trying to think of last time. I just couldn't remember the name of it. So, this is effectively... I think it's like an alternate planet X theory. But most of the concept always showed it as a rocky planet, not a gas giant. So we'll make a separate object for Nibiru. Nibiru, how do you say it? So, yeah, the concept always shows it as a rocky object. It would collide with Earth. So I think it would be more of a super Earth kind of like object. So what should we use for that? We're going to make it pretty scary looking. I think I've got the perfect candidate to use for this, actually. No idea where its orbit distance should be really i mean it was was it was the theory it was i'm gonna collide with earth in 2012 i think wasn't it some sort of conspiracy theory there um about that so i'm thinking this object here the very young planets so it's got all those cool craters um whereabouts would it go though so there's the original planet x i mean i guess it would be sort of in this region as well really i mean I, i'm not really sure where it would go i guess we'll give it more of an inclined orbit to sort of show it would collide with earth so Maybe it needs to have sort of a... Put it there. Here it is. I already think it looks great as well. So, N-I-B-I-R-U. Nibiru. There it is. Pretty scary. We'll give it the menace in red. Yeah, there you go. Actually, speaking of the colours, we'll make this a nice uh, sort of gold and yellow as well. Okay, so down here, so Nibiru. Right, so what I want to do with you is this. So... If it was supposed to collide with Earth, well, this is a system of hypothetical objects, so it needs to obviously go into the inner solar system to sort of show that it would have collided with Earth. So how the heck do we do this? So we just need to lower this down because you want it going in that inner solar system region, so it needs to be getting in there. So let's see. So it's still going pretty fast. So I want it to get closer, so... Hmm. Okay, so we just need to decrease the orbit, really, and just get it in that inner solar system region. So, so it needs to go roughly within the Earth orbit. So it needs to be around one AU distance there. Okay, so there you go. But the issue is now it's within that region. So the furthest point. I mean, how far out does that go? I mean, so that's only going out to four AU. So you know, it's not far enough. I want it to go further out and have that sort of collision point with that inner system. So. How do we do this? That's not. Uh, can we, oh, oh, yeah, okay, okay, right, so. Oh, look at the difference between that and that. I honestly, I think that would actually be quite good there, because it's showing it, it would go. So it's from the outer system past planet 9. See, that's a little too. So what about 0 0.989? So every number counts. But I'm thinking, so does that, how does that fly in? So that goes two, that's now going, no, that's going perfectly in that inner, so roughly where Earth would be in that one AU. So we, we'll use counter Earth, for example, because this is the one AU object as well. So that's perfectly in line with the counter Earth sort of place there. So there it is, the so-called object that would have collided with Earth. Well, it comes from far out and then it flies into the inner solar system. So for instance, move it in. Pull it a little closer just so it's got a bit of sunlight action. So there you go. Nibiru. So the big scary object that was supposed to collide with the Earth. So there it is. Looking pretty menacing as well. Uh, let's go ahead and just turn the temperature down. Because obviously we can make this guy a little more interesting with the brightness now. So remember it is far away from the sun. That's why it's not as reflective. If we were to pull it in the normal lighting it would look more like this. So customization wise. It's always a good object to use this one. I do like this one. So it's got the big craters. You've got another big crater there. Obviously looking very menacing. 
sealed it up roughly the correct way. Got that big crater down there as well. That's a very cool object. So, colours. So, for instance, I can just really make it look really big and scary, this object. So, oh yeah. Maybe make it a little more red, a little more menacing looking. Oh yeah. <laughs> nah, that's a little too much. Um, just more of a, a grey, I guess. So that looks scary. Uh, atmosphere. It has an atmosphere, does it? It does. What the heck is that? Oh, that is weird. <laughs> okay, I don't think we need that. Oh, wow. All right. Oh, my God. <laughs> That's pretty bad. 0 0.01? Even with... Yeah, no atmosphere. No, 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 no. So, we'll leave that alone. So, there it is. Put it back to realistic lighting anyway, so you can see. There it is. Oh, yeah. But either way, I think that's actually quite well. That looks pretty good, actually. It looks pretty menacing. Yeah, we'll stick with that. So, there's Nibiru. So, a so-called object that was supposed to collide with Earth. Well, definitely flies in that Earth orbit. So, there it is. Looking good. Okay. Maybe a little closer, just to get a little more light on it. So, let's increase it. There you go. Yeah. All right, all right. Good, good. So, next up. Hades. What's Hades? Someone's mentioned Hades as well. Planet 10 in the comments mentioned Hades. So what was Hades meant to be? So that's the Greek god of the underworld. Obviously Pluto's the Roman god of the underworld. Hades was the Greek god of the underworld. So what planet is Hades? And it just comes out with Pluto because it's the Roman version. The Greek is the Hades. Yeah, okay. So is it meant to be a separate object or... Is it, is it just describes Pluto? I mean, I'm not really sure here. Um, Hades hypothetical planet? Let's see if that comes up with anything. Mars-sized planetoid to believe to be responsible for the inclination of the Kuiper Belt objects at 50 AU. Oh, so it is meant to be a separate object now. Okay. Interesting. All right. I see that. All right. Okay. That's pretty interesting stuff. All right. So there is some sort of back thing to it. So, again, it's like another Planet 10 sort of... Another sort of Planet 10 theory. Because there's obviously a lot of objects that sort of fit that Planet X, Planet 10 sort of theory. So, okay, we'll go. We'll call it, we'll call it Hades. So it needs to be about 50 AU away. What si how big is it supposed to be? Mars-sized planetoid. Okay, so it's Mars-sized. All right, okay, so... Hmm. What's this one? Let's try this. So 50 AU, so somewhere th around here. Roughly where the planet X is, actually. So all that 50 AU. Somewhere there. I just want to remember, what was this object, actually? Was this that pretty cool? Ooh. Oh, oh, oh. To use this, sir. Uh, um, I don't know about that. But if I put it to zero, I think it loses all that anyway. Yeah. But either way, I think it's a good looking object, either the less. That's what I was sort of looking at it for anyway. So, play. Yeah. And then I just called it Hades. And then we just need to make it Mars size. So, Mars is what? Uh, about 4,400 of radius, isn't it? So, off the top of my head, is it 4,400 uh, kilometers? 4, 4. It's roughly that, isn't it, Mars? Uh, see, that's that right? A little bigger. I think Mars is about three. What, Mars is, must be about three thousand something, isn't it? Kilometers. Uh, three thousand three. Oh, okay. I put an extra thousand, roughly, on. All right. Okay. That's fine. Right. Cool. So a little smaller than. So it needs to be around zero point five. Uh, so make it a little bigger than that. So Mar Mars size. So there you go. It's a pretty menacing looking world. It's obviously too far away from the sun to receive light. But it is there. Hades, the god of the underworld. So there it is. Looks pretty good actually. I'm going to leave it the way it is. I think it looks fine there. It's pretty cool. So I guess we'll give this a dark red. Not Nibiru dark red. But we'll definitely give it a sort of darker sort of shade as well. Somewhere there. Yeah. So there's Hades. Cool. 
Did Planet 10 have, or Planet X have light? I'm sure it did, didn't it? Yeah. So is Hades receiving any light then? It should be if it's in the that same orbital area. I mean, we can just make it, put it at its closest point, actually. So let's do this. So this value, where was it? The true anomaly. So we're going to move it. I think it's... Is it mean anomaly we need to change, or is it true anomaly? I always forget. No, that just moves it in its orbit. Um, oh, sure then, is it? Ah! So it's a little further out the planet X there, but here it sort of merges. Let's have a little zoom in there. Is it receiving any light? No, it is. No, it is just a tiny, tiny bit. I guess what we can do is just make it a tad closer. There you go. So it is, it is getting a bit of light, but you know it's 48. It needs to be 50. So sitting right on the edge there. So there's Hades. Cool. Okay, next up. What else have we got? So any more in the comments? You should have made the sun Nemesis. Uh, see, the issue is Nemesis was to be a brown dwarf, so it wouldn't be able to emit proper light. But speaking of Nemesis, we will throw it in now, as we are at that point. So Nemesis is going to need to be Oort cloud distance like Tish over here. I think it's a similar sort of theory, Tish to Nemesis. So, but instead of being a giant gas giant, Nemesis is obviously a full-on brown dwarf. So we're going to use brown gasser for this, or gasser red, actually. This is a good one. So we're going to place it over here. I guess I'll we'll put it on the opposite side of Tish. So we'll put it roughly there. Now this is going to be more massive because this is obviously a brown dwarf. So 50 Jupiter masses. We'll leave it the way it is. Six of radius. So you know, it's a pretty big deal. There it is there. I think the size is a little too much though. I want to make it a little smaller than that. Um, so where are we? Da -da -da. Densities. We're going to lock that. But uh, 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 this is a little too big for my liking. I want to make it a little smaller. So quite a large brown dwarf, nonetheless, but it needs to be—it's going to be bigger than Tish. So somewhere there, Nemesis. Okay, there you go. So then it gets the obviously the famous name, so Nemesis. There you go. Yeah, so the brown dwarf on the edge of the solar system. There you go. That's looking good. It's N E M E S I S, not I S I S. There you go. So there he is. And there it is, brown dwarf. You know, it looks great, doesn't it? So, there you go. Very, very cool. Nemesis. There you go. Excellent stuff. So, there it is. Slightly tilted orbit as well for extra, uh, an extra cool look. So, there we go. I'm just going to slightly, don't want to make it too off the plane, but there it is. So, Nemesis. The edge of the solar system. So, it puts Planet 9 to shame in distance, really, because I know Planet 9 is a pretty far out deal. But Nemesis is just even further out than Planet 9 is. So... There it is. Okay, but this is what Planet 9's distance is in all my normal simulations. That's the exact same orbit stats we put in last episode. So, you know, showing these guys are pretty damn far. So, there we go. Cool. All right, next up. I think you should be, shouldn't be calling Phaeton Planet 5. Because Planet 5 got consumed by the sun. I haven't got an object called Phaeton... I've got the planet 5, which was going to be that object or what the asteroid belt used to be. A destroyed planet from the asteroid belt um, was what we did last episode. But, I mean, is there, is there any mention of this object on the list here? Um, let's see what else we got. So, Oh, no, okay. So, oh, okay. So, there is two, there is two separate theories. So, we've got the fifth. There's multiple theories for the so-called fifth planet. So, we've got Phaeton here. Then there's also the Planet 5, which is what I designed last episode. Once it exists between Mars and the Asteroid Belt, okay. But we've also got Phaeton, which is situated between the orbits of Mars and Jupiter, whose destruction supposedly led to the formation of the Asteroid Belt. This is now considered unlikely since the Asteroid Belt has far too... Okay. We can have Phaeton as well as Planet 5, why not? Cool. So we already have Planet 5 there. Which is asteroid belt distance. So far as actually just to throw the asteroid belt in just for comparison. So Planet 5 actually needs to be between Mars and the asteroid belt. So we actually do need to make it a little. So there we go. So this actually needs to be a little closer to the sun then in that case. So there. Now we add Phaeton in. Which is 
Planet Citro Teen orbits a Mars and Jupiter, whose destruction supposedly led to the Astro Belt. Okay. Interesting. So how large would this be then? Huh. Well, it's not. It can't be that big because it's if it's making the asteroid belt, you know, it wouldn't be a large object. So, I guess we'll make it a similar size to Planet Five. Make it a little bigger than Planet Five. So, you'll go with a fresh, fresh, rocky world. I think. So, yeah, fresh, fresh, rocky. It's a random rocky planet. We're going to place you there. So, roughly right in the middle of the asteroid belt. So we're going to place it there. There you go. Oh, hang on, a bit inclined on the orbit. No, 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 not having that. So, let's lower the inclination down. There it is. It's nicely in there. We'll just give it a tad, actually, just to make it a little more, a little more interesting. All right, okay, so it's properly in the Astro Belt. Okay, so, it's called PH8 Phaeton. I keep wanting to say Phantom, but no, it's Phaeton. Phaeton. Okay. Supposedly led to the asteroid belt. So again, it's not going to be the most visually interesting object, but you know we can still give it a bit of customization. So elevation maps, obviously, want to give it the cool cratered ones. So you know, an object in this region, you know, it'd have a lot of ashed up areas. So best, how does that look? Let's make the color. I can't actually see the colors very well. It's very dark. So there you go. Yeah. Alright, and then elevation map 2. So we've got Vesta, and we'll combine Vesta with... No, not Sedna. The moon? Maybe the moon? Oi. What about Mercury? Enceladus? Callisto's obviously good for craters as well. Mercury... Mercury's probably the best one for craters. Uh... Or Mercury or Callisto, because they have just got so many on them. Exaggerated train, let's turn that up. There you go, so you can really see the, the craters showing now. So, there we go, okay. Looking good. And I don't really think we need to do too much to it, really. I mean, we'll, we'll keep it. Maybe we can make the areas a little brighter. No? No, I think that looks better dark, actually. So, we'll then make this area white. Looks good. Very heavily bombarded, though, because it is in that asteroid region. So it'd be there. So there it is. So in between Mars and Jupiter's orbits. So there you are. Looking good. So I compare it to Planet 5. That's Planet 5. So a little less craters on Planet 5. You know, still a, still a good amount. So looking good. All right, all right. Looking... All right, yeah. we got a pretty cool little uh, system going on now. So what else have we got? Forgot. You also forgot there's a planet named Phantom between the actual belt average. A Phantom. Okay, I'm assuming they mean this, what I've just designed then. Okay. So the Phaeton, not Phantom. Okay, so that's cool. We got that covered. And the last, there's another comment here. So that's all the. I've just gone through them all. So that's all of the objects that people mentioned. But this is quite an interesting one. So someone said. Add the rest of the solar system in. So what we can do here, you know, you know, as a comparison, you know, we're making a system out of the hypothetical objects, but it's still based in the solar system. So it would only make sense if we press this button here to the sun, press that, and then you get the whole lot. So if let's just press play. Voila! Aha! It makes more sense now. There you go. So. Mer so you got Vulcan, Mercury, Venus. You got the Counter Earth. You got Earth. So what we need to do with Counter Earth and Earth? Earth would need to be on the separate side of the Sun to Counter Earth. So perfectly on the other side, so they can never see each other. So if we look here, turn all this off. I'll actually keep the label on. So Counter Earth's there. So we actually just need to move the regular Earth until the Counter Earth is behind the Sun. Planet X, get out of the way, I can't see you. I can't, the other one, it's blocking the other one. So there's Counter Earth there. So again, we just need to make it so that Counter Earth is completely behind the sun. Which it roughly now, so it is, okay, so it's a little bit more. So now it's completely behind the sun. I can't select Counter Earth. You've got Planet X there, but Counter Earth is literally on the other side of the sun. So if we were to head over to Counter Earth, 
Yeah, they're on like, opposite, complete opposite sides of the sun. That's the that's what the theory says. So they will never see each other, which is pretty cool. So if you press play, let them roll, they will always be on opposite sides. Check that out. That is awesome. And also you got Faya in the mix as well. So that would also have some collisions in there. But again, Faya, I guess we'll move you a little closer to... Uh, where are we? So we'll move you more closer to the Earth, I guess. But also make the orbit a little smaller. Just so it's properly getting in there. But also give it a little more of the other options. So a bit of eccentricity as well, just to make it spice things up a bit. So no, it, is, it is mixing in that Earth orbit area. So there you go. Cool. So Earth and Fair mixed in there. Counter Earth as well. And you've got Mars. You've got Planet 5. Phaeton. Jupiter. So the, that's in between Mars and Jupiter. The asteroid belts in there. We've got Saturn. We've got Nibiru coming into that Earth orbit. So pretty crazy. But obviously the simulation's running. So we will just push it further out. Just so it's not... I don't want it getting slung around. So we'll just leave it there. So it's on its incoming trajectory. Then we've got obviously Saturn, Uranus, Neptune... First of all, Uranus, you know, we're not having that. <laughs> you know, I know we, these aren't the main focus of this episode, but I'm not having, you know, we're having the proper... If we're having them, we're having the proper ones. So we're putting that in there. Same with Neptune, we're having my boy in here. So, although the, the regular Neptune is cool, we're having the cooler Neptune, the dark spot version. There you go, that's more like it. Yeah. And then obviously same with Jupiter and Saturn as well. We'll throw, the, we'll throw our customs in there as well. You know, got to make it interesting, you know, more unique to us. So... Jupiter is there. That's the custom one. More detail. And then same with you, Saturn. There you go, buddy. So, uh, yeah. I think Saturn's roughly the same anyway. Actually, I don't think I'd really use the custom. But there you go. So, yeah, that's more like it. And Neptune. I need to update this trail color. We can't have that gray. It's got to be the proper, you know, the proper, proper blue. Yeah. That's more like it. So, cool. And obviously, Pluto's already... Uh, I guess we could do Pluto as well, actually. Give it its cool little uh, atmosphere it comes with it. So, all right, Pluto. Yeah, that's more like it. So, we'll leave Pluto's trail as this uh, normal cream colour, because normally I'd put Pluto as purple, but we have Planet X in this case, so we don't actually need to do that. So, there you go. Actually, no, no, I want Pluto as purple. No, it just it looks cooler. Let's have it as a different shade of purple. Lighter purple. Yeah. Alright, cool. So, we've added all them. Then, obviously, further out, you've got Planet 9, Tish Nemesis out here. So, you've got the full solar system. We're not going to add the other dwarf planets. We've just got the main the main nine objects. Obviously, Pluto thrown in there as well. Right, so, moving on. That was a good little idea, what um, they said in the comments there. So, that was um, Trickster God 6503 suggest adding the rest of the solar system you know decent idea right so moving on we also have an object called krypton named after the destroyed native world of superman theorized have been a gas giant between mars and jupiter nearly as large as saturn which also contributes to the formation of the asteroid belt so we need another gas giant in the oh right so it needs so how large is it so it's bigger saturn sized so we'll make it a little a little smaller than saturn in that case and so what do we use for this? So, down here, probably have a good template to use. So, we don't want to make it too insane. So, who do we use for this? Not heard of this one either before, Krypton. I've not heard of this theory, so. No, these are all too bad. Ooh, we can use this one. Let's, have a, let's see what this one looks like. So, um. Three miles on Jupiter. I guess we'll throw it right in the middle of the Diastro Belt as well, but that could cause a lot of trouble in that region. So we'll place it there, though. So, what is this? So, four massive. We're not having that. Now, do I like the colours of this, though? That's the question. But I guess it works. I mean, it's gas giant looking, isn't it? So, Krypton. Give it a yellowy trail, like a satiny Jupiter colour. Okay, so. Size wise, first of all, we're not having any of that, so it needs to be mass wise. We'll leave that low. So, Saturn in kilometers is roughly around 50,000, isn't it? So, it's about 59,000. So, I guess we'll put this at a, a solid sort of 14, 47, 500 sort of size. Lock that, and then the mass. What is this in Earths? 
So again, that's more massive than Saturn. So I don't want it to be. So I want it to be roughly around 35 Earth masses because Saturn's what 59, isn't it? Saturn. Oh, it's 95. What am I saying? I oh, know 59 on the rate. So what's it's radius? 59,000 radius. Ah, 58. Okay, so that's 58. So this is 47,000. And it's got 30. Yeah, I think that's a. You know, it's not as big as Saturn, but you know, it's it's near there. So, okay, so press play, and then there you go, Krypton. I think the colours look fine actually. It doesn't. Does it? Does it sort of fit in with the the system? So we're getting quite a lot, of, quite a busy system now. But I think that look, I think that looks fairly all right. You know, if you line them up, I think it sort of fits in there. It's kind of like a mix, a little more yellowy than Saturn, I guess. I mean, is it, how many bands is this guy sitting on? I mean, that's. I guess we could lower it a bit just to. So it's not too insane, but you know, well, a bit more than a bit. Okay, just yeah, yeah. Oh, look at this one. T shirt. What's it tilted on its side for? Oi, we'll put it the right way around. There you go. So that is our lineup now. So you've got Nemesis, you've got Teach, that giant. So basically, this is just the alternate Nemesis theory there. Jupiter. Saturn for comparison. Oh, hey. Oi. Oh, we don't need the... Uh, all right, fine. So Saturn. Krypton. Uranus. Neptune. Planet X. And you've got Planet 9. X and 9, it's roughly the same sort of size. So it's a quite similar theories. Got Counter-Earth. A little larger than the Earth. You've got Nibiru. Again, larger than the Earth. Phaeton. Now that's a little bigger than it should be, shouldn't it? That shouldn't be that big. No, we no. This needs to be more. No, no, that needs to be more of a Mars-like object, isn't it? So we're gonna lower this. There's Hades. Uh, maybe a little. No, it's, I think Mars should be bigger than this as well. I think this should be somewhere there. There's Mercury. There's Theia. Theia's Mars size. So maybe Theia needs a little bigger little bigger sort of size maybe a little bigger than mars there's hades so that's the one far far out which was a mars size object as well so maybe we'll make that a little just a little bigger so okay it's got a lot of mars size objects in here phaeton mercury vulcan which is also a small object and you've got pluto and then you've got planet five which again is quite a small object because it's only combined from asteroid belt material so it's not a large object either way um okay that's it. I mean, yeah. Is this a planet now? Is my you know because smaller than Pluto? You know though. You know well, for the purpose of this, we will leave it alone. You know we'll we'll still have it the way it is. So that Nibiru is looking pretty spooky, isn't it? But I think that does need to be a little bigger still. I think it's if it's going to be a super Earth, it needs to be a super Earth. So we're making it considerably bigger than the Earths in here. So there you go. Yeah. Look, even counter us got city lights. Yay. Cool. Right. I think that's quite a good lineup, actually. I've got to say, I really like the way this system's covered up. Now we've got the solar system objects in here. The real the real planets. Actually having it all together, put together. Look how look how complex the solar system would have been if these objects all turned out to be real. <laughs> I'll tell you what, it wouldn't be good with Nibiru, I have to say. But um, even Krypton, you know, this will cause massive asteroid belt chaos because... Obviously, Jupiter is not in the asteroid belt, and this already slings a lot of objects around. If you have a gas giant actually in the asteroid belt, you know, that have asteroids, that's going to sling around the inner solar system. And cause trouble. You know, that's going to be uh, pretty mad. Right, anyways, moving on. So what else have we got? So we covered all that. Uh, Hyperion, a large distant 10th planet theorized in 2000 to have an effect on Kuiper Belt formation. A large distant 10th planet. Okay, so I guess we'll make another super Earth kind of object. Let's use the world of ice. I'm going to place this again. So it needs to be... Kuiper Belt. So I guess it's further out than Planet X, and I guess we'll pull it Kuiper Belt sort of out here, isn't it? Oh, I don't know. When. Effect on Kuiper Belt objects. Theorized to have been in the. Oh. Huh.
up here and a theorized effect on Kuiper formation. Okay, so, okay, so if it's going to be Kuiper, so it needs to be sort of. I'll, I'll put it in between Planet Nine and Tish then, somewhere sort of here. Something like that. And what's interesting is it's got the same name as Saturn's moon Hyperion. Interesting. So it's a super Earth already, free ready server. So if I just line that up, so. Somewhere there. Little bigger than oh that's two nah nah a little smaller than that. But I guess a little smaller than Nibiru as well, since Nibiru's like the doomsday planet. So we'll put it sort of there. World of Ice, Hyperion. It's obviously far out, it's gonna be cold. World of Ice, so we'll use that as our template. And then we'll just uh, have a little fun with its so orbit as well, just to make it maybe we'll line it up with the Planet Nine sort of orbit a bit, so its planes a little different, but so what would we'll leave that there. Rotate it round. And then just give it a bit of eccentricity, so double it up a bit. Yeah, no. Make it a little bigger. Uh, rotate it around. Decrease a bit. Put it there. So I kind of have it in the same sort of bent direction that Planet Nine's in. So I think it needs to be more like that actually. And then the same with T actually. So we're going to actually move this to sort of match that. And then also you've got Nemesis in the distance as well. We'll put that on opposite sides to you, actually, just to make it a little more different as well. Okay. So there's Hyperion. To another Kuiper Belt distant object. But again, you know, obviously because these objects don't exist, there's no real fact of where they should be placed. So we'll just have to go with our sort of instincts of where we want to place them. So we'll stick with that. Okay, cool. So, moving on. Any other ones? So we've got Fea, we've got Vulcan, Vulcanoids, um, we're not going to do moons, stars, Nemesis, yeah, we've got Nemesis, and that's basically it, I think, Vulcan, done that, we've got the five planet, the five, planet five, we've got the planet nines, we've got the planet tens, all those theories, so Nibiru, planet ten, all that, we've got all those. Because there's alternate theories for the same object. Obviously, Planet X, Planet 10, you could put Planet 9 theory as the same sort of theory in there. You've got the Hades planet, you've got Nibiru, that's all Planet 10 X theories there. You've got Tish as well. And that's everyone. That's everyone's comments covered in the comments as well. So, I think that is it. Now, of all the major names, all the major theoretical objects i think that is our full sort of solar system list so if we just go ahead and save get it all in there so there you go now i think that is looking pretty cool so i hope you guys have enjoyed this let me know what you think of this is there enough to make another episode on this you guys i'll let you guys be the judges of that if we can come up with like another four or five objects um i guess we could probably do another one and finish this off but you know there's our lineups we've got the sun nemesis we've got teach Obviously, Jupiter, Saturn, let's just leave the Astro Belt in the back. Uh, Saturn, Krypton, which is a Saturn sized object in the Astro Belt. Uranus, Neptune, Planet X. Then we've got Planet 9, our Planet IX there. Nibiru, the Doomsday Planet. Hyperion, the Counter Earth on the opposite side to the Earth. The Earth, Venus. Hades, the sort of mysterious Mars sized planet really far away. We've got Theia, the planet that was theorized to collide with the Earth which formed the moon, Mars, we've got Phaeton here, which was an object that could have turned into the asteroid belt, just torn apart by Jupiter, Mercury, Vulcan, obviously the planet super close to the sun, which was a theory for a long time as well, we've obviously got Pluto in there for comparison, and then planet 5, which is basically all the asteroid belt merged into one object, so there you go guys what do you think of that so if you've enjoyed this episode really really hope you enjoyed it last episode got 117 likes as of filming this so let's see if we can smash that on today's episode guys let's try and go for 120 likes as you guys seem to really enjoy this so let's do this and also if you haven't already subscribed helps with the journey to 30,000 subscribers as we are less than 700 subscribers away now guys so if you haven't definitely make sure to press that subscribe button as well and yeah, let's go for the 30k mark, hopefully by the start of autumn. So, before before September. Let's try and aim for the, the end of August. 30,000 for the end of August. Let's set that as our goal. And, yeah, yeah, let's see if we can uh, 
hit that because that'd be absolutely amazing yeah we'll definitely have some 30k celebrations planned but stay tuned for that but anyways guys with that all said and done make sure you guys all stay safe out there have a great rest of your day and i'll see you in the next video goodbye